You can tell right away he was dead. Our concern is that somebody got away with murder here. No one's ever told you about this? No. Why wasn't the case reopened? Her life's uh, been in a bit of a downward spiral. and It was devastating for her. It's taken everything from me. I'm broken. We have a concern that a person is sitting in jail that may not be responsible for the death. There have been lives that have been ruined and affected by this, families who have been torn apart. What can you do about that? Hi, Tammy. Hi, Tammy, it's Mark Kelly calling from the Fifth Estate. So I'm, I'm an hour and a half away from you. Turn right onto Rousseau Street. Why don't we get together and just sit down and have a talk? In 200 meters, your destination will be on the right. You're at the Gray Sky Train Station. Is that, Is that her? Here, right? yeah. That, yeah, way back here. Mark, okay. I'll walk. What do you re remember about that, that day? Oh, like it's like a blur. I wish I could change things, I really do. It's made a real nightmare for me. That was years ago. Yeah. So you can't really even outrun your past. No, I can't. It was May 26, 2011. I was working that day. There was a 911 call to a residence here in town. The call was for possible drowning of a 19-month-old uh, girl. 19-month-old Ayanna Teeple had been in the care of her 28-year-old babysitter for just a few hours. Ayanna Teeple had a big smile and made friends easily. Her babysitter was giving her a bath, but left her alone to clean up a spill in another room. Uh, the child eventually was pronounced dead over Calgary, and uh, the medical examiner's office over there becomes involved. But once an autopsy was done on the child, the police investigation would take a dramatic turn. A medical examiner's report is key to any of these types of investigations. A medical examiner plays a critical role at the intersection between medicine and law enforcement. An autopsy determining the cause and manner of death. And the difference between an accident and foul play. Look the same? Yeah, they built a new front. Looks good. Medical examiners can help determine who goes to jail and who walks free. The date that everything happened was? Uh, November 20th, 2010. Just ask Sally Wheeler. Two weeks after he turned 36. Really? Yeah. What do you think of when you see the place now? It just makes me sad, you know? I lived here for a long time and it was my sanctuary at one point and then that all just changed. Yeah. I guess you can never get that back. No, no. The officer said, the medical examiner said, you know, his heart gave out, that he had some heart condition that was really hard to detect. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. I was so shocked that this is what he's telling me. And in your heart, your gut, you thought a crime had happened in your house. Absolutely. A husband, a baby, two lives lost. And at the heart of both their stories, lies the same medical examiner, Dr. Evan Matches. And in both cases, his autopsies would be put under the microscope. These are the reviews of each of the 14 cases. Are they looking to see whether he did his job right? They're looking for mistakes. In our previous episode, 
we revealed a report unearthed by our colleague Rachel Ward, which shows back in 2012, Matches' work was raising questions and concerns. And these are done by this review panel that was brought in. Yeah, they brought so Alberta down. Justice brought in three expert pathologists from the U.S. to examine 14 cases he'd worked on. And they went through his files, toxicology reports, pictures, slides, police reports. In 13 cases, the expert panel raised red flags about Matches' conclusions. Manner of death was unreasonable, so was the cause of death. Unreasonable. Yeah. They mean a reasonable pathologist in this situation should not have come to this conclusion. Alberta Justice knew it had a big problem on its hands. Results of that expert panel could possibly be evidence in criminal cases, both active and closed ones. Their report would have to be disclosed to the lawyers. Greg Lepp, then Alberta's chief crown prosecutor, had stated, there were people in prison whose liberty may hinge on this. The Justice Minister of the day, Jonathan Dennis, said the results were concerning. Alberta Justice vowed they would look into all the murder cases to correct any possible miscarriages of justice. Ayanna died in the bathtub on May 26th. Bouvette was babysitting the child who was found face down in a bathtub. Cranbrook RCMP were on the scene after a 911 call from Tammy Bouvette. There's nothing in our investigation that would state that she intended to cause the death of the, of the 19-month-old. I believe just a series of events happened and, and as a result of that we had a, a child that, that died, unfortunately. Tragically. The RCMP didn't see murder. But then Dr. Matches talked to a Crown prosecutor in BC. He said there was extensive bruising on the baby, which, in his opinion, is typical of abused children. He added, there's no benign explanation for the child's injuries. Twenty-eight-year-old Tammy Bouvette was arrested yesterday. Police say she was an acquaintance of the child's parents and occasionally babysat for them. She has four children of her own under the age of ten. Tammy Bouvette is charged with second-degree murder in the death of a 19-month-old baby girl. Being charged with second-degree murder is not right. I love that little girl like my own. It's a horrible thing happened. And then I get charged with something like this. There's no justice. When I first reviewed the file, it screamed out for a different resolution. It was not a murder trial. Tammy's former lawyer is in Trail, BC. There was something incongruous about the matches report in terms of how it lay in the context of the remainder of the evidence in the file. By suggesting there was intent or abuse in this case. Absolutely. There was just no um, evidentiary foundation for the conclusions that were reached in that report. When you, when you read the report, you say, whoa, that's, that's a jump. That's a logical jump. There are 14 cases that are being reviewed. Did you have any idea at that point that yours was one of them? I had no idea that was not disclosed to me. Well, then I think the least we can do is share that with you. As for the child abuse Matches had claimed, well, the other three pathologists say it didn't happen. So manner of death, not reasonable. Cause of death, not reasonable. Other opinions, not reasonable. Yeah, well, that was my gut feeling when I got the file. She wasn't a murderer. No. No, she's just a really sweet person, actually. From the start, one of the top officials in Alberta justice, Greg Lepp, had said it was their constitutional obligation to disclose anything that affects the cases to defense counsel. Alberta justice says it sent the review to the BC Crown, but without knowing about the results, Tammy pled guilty to criminal negligence to avoid a life sentence if convicted of murder. I would say uh, uh, without qualification that Tammy Bouvette's a victim of a miscarriage of justice. I find it shocking. The idea that you've got pathologists 
all sitting down together and agreeing the most important thing that's being alleged against this lady is false. Uh, it's extraordinary that it wasn't disclosed. Extraordinary. From your experience, what does it do to the individual to be a victim of a miscarriage of justice? What's it, what does it do to their life? Once they're convicted, they're, uh, everyone presumes guilt. No one believes a claim of innocence. It's only an exoneration that will, will give them their name back. What was the impact of second degree murder charges on your client, for, for her being labeled with this as, as essentially a baby killer? There was a horrible stigma. And um, that, that stigma uh, was even extended to her family and her children. And so um, I believe she ended up leaving the community uh, and it was devastating for her. Tammy Bouvet's life was now spiraling down, and her four children would lose their mom. She entered prison labeled a baby killer. Behind the scenes, Dr. Matches fired back at Alberta Justice. He argued the review of his 14 cases was designed to discredit him. He wrote Justice Minister Jonathan Dennis about Tammy's case, saying he'd noted numerous injuries to the child that were alarming and he hired a law firm to take on Alberta Justice, who he said weren't behaving in a just or fair manner. Best mom I could ask for, um, put her heart into everything. Meanwhile, Tammy's four children were now growing up without a mom. This is the most recent photo I have of her. Yeah, she was almost crying in this photo too, because she's, she misses my sisters and I a lot. Her oldest child, Isaiah, was in and out of foster care. When she left, that's where everything went downhill. I really wish I could see her, but like, I, that's something that can't happen and I gotta accept that. She could have passed away, I have no idea. She's been in trouble with the law for years now. And it all started back in Cranbrook after that incident. Tammy Bouvet served two years in jail and would leave Cranbrook forever. Hi there. Hi. Yeah, it's Mark Kelly calling from the Fifth Estate. Then we got a lead. We're trying to find some information about Tammy Bouvet. Would you have any idea about where we could find her. We're trying to get in contact with her. That would be great. New Westminster? Okay, thank you. So he says he will give her our phone number in the hopes that um, she'll contact us. So it looks like she's in New Westminster, just outside of Vancouver. After a year of battling Alberta justice, Dr. Matches would get his way. The justice minister consented to set aside the panel's report because Matches hadn't been given time to review it. Special counsel Marta Burns wrote a report saying it was integral his work be investigated again. And that justice demands a new external review panel be conducted. That was almost seven years ago. When we come back, who dropped the ball seven years ago while people are sitting in jail, seven years ago while families don't know whether or not it was a homicide or it wasn't a homicide. Seven years. I, I, I don't know how that could ever be justified. Clearly you would believe as the Minister of Justice that there should be justice for all, not just justice for some. How did you meet Preston? Through work. Well, we got together in April 2007. He's a good guy. Typical maritimer, you know, like friendly, likes to drink, easygoing, you know, unflappable. I always said he was my angel, and now he is. 
Sally Wheeler fell in love with a man with a big heart. So the night that Preston came home with a couple of strangers, yeah. what was your feeling? I just wasn't comfortable with him being there. I was like, I know, he's this bit, you know, babe, it's so cold outside, you know, can't leave him out there. November 2010, Preston Lawhead brought home two strangers in town from the U.S. whose vehicle had broken down. Yeah, around midnight or after midnight. I heard them upstairs, and they were talking about going to fix this guy's truck. It was like minus 40, and I, I, I didn't want to go fix his truck. I went to bed. So he was like, come on downstairs, we're playing poker. Do you guys want to join in? And they said no. He asked them if they wanted a drink, and they each had like water glasses of straight rum, and I thought, that's not good. I just went and laid down on the bed, and I thought, oh, I'll just wait here. He'll be up in just a minute, and everybody will be gone. And I fell asleep. It was about, I think it was like 10 to 7, right around 7 o'clock. Woke up, opened the door and found Preston. The next thing I know, Jimmy was waking me up. It's Preston. Obviously there was a fight, you know, the table was knocked over and everything was on the floor and it was kind of off beside that, just laying on the ground. Couldn't even get the words out. I was hysterical, crying. You could tell right away he was dead. That's when Jimmy noticed one of the strangers was still in the house. I told him to stay and he opened the door and took off. Why did you feel that Preston was murdered? There was a fight. He's dead. Even if the guy didn't set out to kill him, they were in a fight and Preston was dead. To me, it just made sense. The RCMP opened an investigation into Preston's death, but Dr. Evan Match's autopsy would change everything. He acknowledged the fight played a part, but concluded Preston died from heart disease, not a homicide. Sally says police told her no charges would be laid. I was just mad. I was frustrated and just, he was gone and you know, his, now his kids weren't gonna have a father and it just wasn't fair. And it just didn't seem right that, you know, he just got to walk away. When you expected there would be charges laid. Yeah. It was just so hard for so long. Our investigation shows that in 2012, in case after case, the opinions of the three pathologists hired to review Dr. Match's autopsies were not disclosed to the defense. So today you were arrested for murder. Butch Chinike. 28-year-old Tammy Bouvet is charged with second-degree murder in the death of a 19-month-old baby girl. And now, Tammy Bouvet. This is a report that we have obtained. The panel disagrees in this case. They said he got it wrong. Manner of death, cause of death, yeah, they think he got it wrong. Manner of death, cause of death, they think he got it wrong. You get the point. So, why am I seeing this for the first time today? This is what I want to know from you. This is a significant uh, difficulty that has to be addressed with the government. It just has to be. Buried in those files, a twist. Sally Wheeler had been told her husband died of natural causes, but that's not what the expert panel concluded. So they looked at the files and they went through it and this is, this is their determination. Yeah. I believe it was a case of strangulation. Yes. In the opinion of the three pathologists, a homicide is more appropriate with these circumstances. No one's ever told you about this? No. No. Why wasn't the case reopened? Why did nothing happen? This is just really just a slap in the face. And that's our concern is that somebody's, somebody got away with murder here. Yeah. Yeah. Back in 2012, Alberta Justice said they'd handled it. Letters were sent to police recommending they review case files. But the RCMP involved in Preston's case told us 
There is no communication from Alberta Justice on this investigation. It obviously just wasn't one person dropped the ball. They have all this information and nothing was done. So who is responsible for that? Who is accountable for, for this? Well, the justice minister is ultimately responsible. After Alberta Justice set aside the report from that expert panel, the minister, Jonathan Dennis, concluded the administration of justice demands a new external review panel be conducted. Those are very strong words. That was said in 2013. I haven't heard anything about another peer review. Minister of Justice demanded this. What has been done since then? As far as we can see, nothing. Who dropped the ball? Seven years ago while people are sitting in jail. Seven years ago while families don't know whether or not it was a homicide or it wasn't a homicide. Seven years of that occurring. I, I, I don't know how that could ever be justified. This dairy farm seems like an unlikely place to find the current justice minister, but he was here discussing rural policing. Pleasure to meet you. Yep. Uh, this all happened before your watch, yep. obviously, but I want to know from you as the current minister of justice, what can you do to look into a buried report that may represent a serious miscarriage of justice? Uh, I mean, obviously this is brought to my attention this morning when we got here for a different announcement, uh, but I need to follow up and get more details at this point. Yeah, we've been in contact with the Office of Alberta Justice now yep. four months. Okay and we have received nothing in response to... No, I appreciate that. I'd encourage you to actually to send it directly to my ministry's office as well. We have. No, I appreciate that. It becomes painfully obvious. No one in Alberta justice has briefed the minister. And, and clearly you would believe as the minister of justice that there should be justice for all, not just justice for some. So what can be done for the people? There, there, there have been lives that have been ruined and affected by this, families who have been torn apart. What can you do about that? I mean, obviously, you know, the serious matters that you've, you've brought to my attention, send it on to us so we can take a look and review it. Uh, and at that point in time, I can get further details and give you a more, more meaningful response. Thank you. No, appreciate it. No, yeah, obviously, yeah. follow up. How are you, Tammy? Not so good today? Here's what I'm proposing, Tammy. Why don't, uh, why don't we get together and, and have some lunch and just sit down and have a talk? I'm at Front Street in Columbia, down by the water. Turn right onto Russo Street. All right, see you in a few seconds then. Thanks, Tammy. So I'm recording now. Is that, that her? Or, yeah. Should we let you out way back here? Okay, I'll walk. After days of searching, we finally find Tammy. What's left of her life stuffed into a few bags. I'm totally lost. I haven't been the same. Ever since? Yep. Ever since the accident. What did it do to you? How did it change it, you? It bro I'm broken. It just, everything, my, my name and everything, my children. A terrible thing happened and I wish I could have changed it. And um, I got put in a category, which I'm not. What category is that? I am not a baby killer. People just look at me differently, like I was some type of monster and I'm not. I'm a loving person and a loving mom. The Alberta government had done a review in 14 cases. And your case was one of them. They got these experts to come in and they looked at the work. Yeah. They believed that there were some problems with the work that helped police decide to lay second degree murder charges against you. They believe there were some problems that affected you and affected your case. This information, it got put away and nobody's ever seen it really until we found it. No one wanted to hear my side. Um, it's like it's a big weight off, off my uh, chest. It makes a big difference to put things right, like the truth sets you free. What do you think about the fact that this information has been 
buried away and um i just it's really i'm i'm really angry and very upset and being wrongfully accused that's even worse um but i'm very angry um what i not just what i went through but for my children also the people responsible for the review of dr match's work are now in some of the highest positions of alberta's justice system Special counsel Marta Burns is now a Superior Court judge. Her office sent us an email saying she was not responsible for disclosure to defense counsel. Greg Lepp, once head of the prosecution service, also now a judge, and told us... A lot of people out there hate me. Like, it's hard for me to live with my life. Jonathan Dennis, then Justice Minister, now runs a private law firm. He told us to talk to the current minister. Pleasure to meet you. Yep. We did. Send it on to us. Doug Schweitzer is the one person who could order another review of these cases. But after looking into the file, it's clear Thank you. he won't. The Justice Minister's response? This matter predates his time in office. There is one person who was at Alberta Justice during the time of the review and is still there now. Eric Toppelman is now an assistant deputy minister. In an email, he said the review process was handled by the book, adding, in the end, the findings of the panel are inconsequential. I gotta say to them is just shame on them for not, uh, you know, doing their uh, job right. It's taken everything from me, my freedom, my my whole self, everything. Do you think you can get that back? Um, I don't know. It's hard to say. I hope so. What's next for you, Tammy? I just want to have a new chapter in my life for me and my children. I know it's going to take time, but you know, it's just baby steps, right? As a result of our story, the BC Crown Prosecution Service is launching an investigation into their own conduct in the handling of Tammy's case.